Hello and welcome from the distant past. It's Big Sexy Commentary in Emporia, Kansas at the Dynamic Discs Open. We are here for round one, our feature card. Going to watch the front nine on the Emporia Country Club course. It's Nate Sexton and Jeremy Colling. In our feature group, we have got a star-studded lineup. Obviously, we've got Simon Lazat, who did not finish because of a, uh, a sickness he had last year, but always entertaining to watch, a former GBO champion, of course. Nico Locastro did not play in 2019. I do not know the story behind that. But Nico's taken some breaks from the tour from time to time to kind of get his wits about him. And obviously Macbeth, the former champion of this event, the former champion of every event. <laughs> 16 down, which is a, a kind of a low score. And by low, I mean not low under par, but not as low under par as you would imagine these players getting. But 2019 GBO had some of the most ferocious wins we had ever seen. And 16 down was actually really impressive. Obviously, he won. I'm pretty surprised to see Drew so far back last year, as this is usually a great event for him. And I expect it will be again this year with all the power that he has. Hole one, par five. This has been pushed back. We've got a new pin location, 1,224 feet. So it's kind of Big hyzer, big flat shot, anything you want to do. There's OB on both sides early, but just get as far down there as you can with the first couple shots. Simon Lazat. And this first tee shot really is fun because you get to really all out rip it. It's kind of like Maple Hill hole one where you really get to just full out lay a shot out there. There is obviously out of bounds on the right side and left side, but for players like Simon and pretty much everyone on this card, a big hyzer is safe play because you really don't need to flex the full distance. However, that second shot is where Obese really starts to creep up because it's a blind shot over a hill. Lewis, Missouri, sponsored by West Side Discs, your 2009 United States Disc Golf Champion, Nico LaCastro. And that OB really starts to creep in on the left side. And with that basket being pushed back another 100 to 150 feet, it really makes it a three-shot hole now, whereas in the past we'd seen eagles on this hole usually at least four or five times an event. We're not going to be seeing eagles on this hole. No. The green is so tight. I can't imagine anybody, the green even is if you had the arm for it. Right. It, and not only is the green tight, but there's a that slope behind the basket that really makes it difficult to run any shots at it. And I'm just struck by listening to that 2009 U.S. champion for Nico. He still seems like a really young guy. Like, what a career this guy has been putting on for his city for coming on 20 years now. 2013, Drew's counting in the background. He's just exhausted hearing about his accolades. <laughs> He's like, all right, man, I got to tee off. I got to tee off for my city. Yes. That's perfect. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all these drives are just, they're all 450 feet to maybe 500, but just a real safe hyzer for them. Michael, California, sponsored by Infinite Discs, Drew Gibson. And the late change. The biggest advantage on this one to go big is that you can Luck, that third Jeremy. shot is what you want to have the shortest shot. And so if that big shot here, that's really the tee shot's the only place where you really feel like you can bite off a lot because this is now the little bit um, tighter. Little lower line here with the hyzer. Oh, and just Nico. Just catches the trees. And I believe that stayed up in the tree. No two meter rule at the DDO this year. So that won't be a penalty stroke for Nico. And Drew rips this one. This is a high hyzer. Coming back in. Oh, that's that's a great shot. 
And those flags you see are actually the um, circle one and circle two flags for the FPO pin, which is just a bit shorter than the par five pin for both fields uh, in, in prior years. Yeah, it's maybe 200 feet apart. Yeah, something like that. And those are just exact, that, inside those flags sets you up for about 120 to 150 foot approach. That's what these guys are all looking for. Oh, and Paul must have caught the top of the tree. He's gonna have a longer approach than I think he was expecting. He even has to grab a driver. The outside hyzer. And you do not want to go in with a full speed, a high speed disc on this green. And you can see why right there as Paul gets a big skip off to the left. He might be in the woods. It might be a really tricky putt for the birdie from out there. Nico as well, looking like he's going to be going with a high speed driver out high and wide. Calling for it to sit. Oh my word, that almost went in. Yeah, he thought it's out of bounds. It is a down, the green slopes down, and there is OB back there it, behind the basket. It's a really treacherous little spot to try to slow the disc down. And it's only about 60 feet behind the pin, and considering he came in past the basket with the driver and on the skip angle, I'm surprised that that stayed in bounds. I think it just had enough left movement. Yeah. And that just barely crawls off of that OB tee pad area. Oh. All the golf tee pads are, okay. are delineated OB out here. And so there's just that little spot. If you just happen to throw too flat and too soft, you could end up OB just like 40 short of the basket. Just one more thing to think about as these guys are approaching this hole. This hops off of that OB and into a yeah. very nice spot. Looks like a inside the circle birdie putt. A little bit of a scary putt, especially for the first hole of the event. Downhill to a basket that has just nothing but downhill behind it. And Drew hits those new pads on the uh, marketing pads is really what they are. Just a mm -hmm. nice disc golf pro tour touch. Paul's a bit low, and it's you can see the uh, the flags are blowing out here. This is traditional Emporia weather, um, especially for this time of year. We're in June, which is not normal for us to be out here. We're typically in this part of Kansas in April every year, but obviously with COVID-19, mm. man, a missed putt from everyone in the group. I like thinking of weather as traditional. Like Emporia has a proud tradition <laughs> of windy, <laughs> hot summers. Yeah, well, they really do, man. It's <laughs> And here's Drew for his par. Oh. And I think, you know, you have to you have to blame his putt 98% for that. But maybe 2% <laughs> is on that is on that pad. That oh. thing rolled back in a way that I sure. do not expect it would have. Sure. If you just had a metal pole there like normal. Right, right. So that, that little pad, you know, it's part of the course. Yeah. It may have, cha it may have changed the score. Yeah, and, and I was talking to Jeff Spring about that. He said that people were uh, were complaining about it or at least talking about it. Like, hey, what what's that about? And, you know, I, I when I was talking about it, I, I didn't think that it would – possibly have any effect on the play but mm -hmm. right there in the first hole of the event right there it had an effect on the play i mean like you said that would have just dropped under the basket and drew would have had it to happen we would have had four pars but no we got one bogey and three pars and moving on to hole two hole two par four 759 feet uphill ob on that left side in the past there's been ob on the right side but i think that's been removed and it's all the way to the fence line which theoretically might open up a bigger turnover or a roller play we're going to see Simon go for that turnover. And I will say that is a that is actually a really awkward shot coming in, going straight down this tee pad and then going left side of that tree with a turnover. The, these tee pads out here, they're very long. We get long runway tee boxes, but they're a little bit narrow. And for a guy like Nico, it might not be hard for him to nimbly work his way around that and get off that tee box cleanly. But for a bigger guy like myself, I certainly struggle coming in at an angle on, on any of these tee boxes. 
That was a nice controlled shot from Nico. Right into a, a perfect landing zone for this hole. And I wouldn't be surprised to see Paul go for the up high over Anheuser. It sets up well for these, uh, the way that these tee boxes are shaped. The high Anheuser, and especially with the out of bounds being taken out on the right side. Oh no, he comes up off the right side of the tee box as well. And this is a really impressive shot. Just eating up distance and just showing you the command of the distance driver, mm -hmm. 475 feet down range and still able to stop it from fading left. That is the sign of just an elite, elite power thrower. And Drew goes left side with a flippy destroyer. Is it flipping enough? I don't believe it is. That is fading back out of bounds. Not quite sure how much distance he uh, ate up before going out of bounds, but he got quite a bit. A pretty tricky backdoor hyzer there from Simon. That looked great. Can't quite tell. Oh, yeah, he made it up to Circle's Edge. After not throwing the greatest tee shot, that's a that's a really good approach. Nico going to go with that hyzer around the back side of the trees. Doesn't really swing for him, and he's going to be in the long grass circle almost maybe even outside circle to mm. 60, 70 feet. Really? There is out of bounds long, which could come into play since you are going up a hill, over the hill, and then down the hill just slightly. But Drew with a really nice mm. approach there. That is going to be a tap in par. And Paul close enough to go to a mid range. I mean, calling his own a mid-range because he's throwing it is the only reason. I mean, that's a putter speed disc. Yeah, but it, I, I don't know. I feel like it's it's about how how people use it. All right. If nobody puts it, it's not a putter. It's all about speed to me, man. That's a speed. That's a putter speed disc. That thing doesn't go anywhere. It goes close to the basket. Well, no, that's true. Here is Nico just outside circle two. If my eyes don't deceive me, I see a blue flag over there. And really the first time you can see evident, like the evidence of the wind, it pretty much stays swirling and consistent for the entire day. Great putt. Slow as replay, catching the edge of the chains and dancing its way in. Awesome. All with a routine birdie there, really making that hole very easy with that big drive. Getting off the par train after one hole. Yeah. <laughs> a good save for par from Drew and two birdies, Simon and Paul. Hole three is a downhill par three at 489 feet with a very tight green. A really nice birdie if you can pick it up because you can see OB on the left side. There's a cart path on the right side. That long grass down on the left of your picture is also OB. So you really don't have a lot more than circle one. Once you're down there, that's about all the inbounds territory they give you. Simon goes with a mid-range roller here. Interesting play. And it's just getting blown out by the wind. It's not going to be able to really make much progress just because of that and he does stay no. out of bounds never hooked back it tried but yeah i think yeah. i think with that wind coming across it, it just can blow the bottom of the disc out and it doesn't really continue the way you would want it to so whether it was maybe a missed angle or or what it, it's it's ob and ob fairly early it, the grass in in kansas in the summertime is something i remember from playing worlds here several times it just is a thicker grass than you're used to, and rollers are, are tricky just for the angles getting down. is not what you're used to in other places. I think that's true of all humid places. Right. Like if there's a lot of moisture in the grass, it's just a very, it's robust. Mm -hmm. And you're not going to just plow through there. That is such a sick shot. 
goodness yeah. gracious that is, just the angle control just putting the power on it to know that that disc is never really going to have time to hyzer out and get him in any trouble as it just hits that grass and slows down and nico here oh really no, that's with a, a poor a poor forehand and it's cut rolling straight out of bounds that is a huge thrower alert thrower alert oh no Drew's also going to go with a forehand. That was textbook, just early cut. I mean, that's that's how throwers are done right there. He wants to throw a flex, I'm pretty sure, but yeah. you know, just a little too low, and then all of a sudden the ground is there to catch it. Speaking of the ground. Oh, and Drew was going for the wide hyzer. And he was not, in fact, OB. We saw an OB graphic there, but he's just straight off the tee, mm. 60, 70 feet. And that, again, is a very low one. And I, I like the low forehand here if you can keep it just over that hill. But that's the danger you run into. Too low, and you throw it about 70 feet off the tee box. That's a and what a tough shot this is. Somewhere you would never practice from. And that is Disc golf beautiful. instincts are high on that one right there. That is a fantastic adjustment for Nico and set himself up for the bogey, which... Can't be too upset about after that tee shot. Simon lays one up. And it looks like Paul's going to have an opportunity to take two and perhaps even three strokes from everyone on this card. Such a good putt. So smooth. What a pickup. One of the just bonus birdies on the course. I, I mean, if you ever birdie hole three... At Emporia Country Club. You did something really great. Everyone else putting for a single bogey. Oh, Simon. And it's going to be a double, most likely, likely for Simon now. Oh, goodness. A bit of a disaster on this hole for everyone except Paul. Drew, I think, you know, easy to have your confidence shaken when you have a shank like that where he went straight into the ground, but then he went to another forehand and it was really not close. Like his, yeah. sec, his second, you know, to he had an opportunity to maybe save a par, but hard to do after you're just kind of questioning, you know, how did I just have that? It's like worst shot I've thrown in months. And, mm -hmm. then, and then to go right back to that shot, pretty difficult. Well, it's one of the first forehands he's thrown in play in months. Obviously, this is the return to action since the... Since the COVID outbreak and yeah, first disc golf pro tour event since early March down there in Waco, Texas. And you'll see, you know, the, we see it right here. Perfect timing from my, my commentary partner, but some alcohol spray to try to sanitize a little bit. Obviously no spectators allowed at this event. So it's a little bit of a muted atmosphere as compared to what we'd usually be used to. Just a few media crews and uh, other players that maybe have finished their round that are kind of milling around and, and watching the action. As we look at hole four, par three, 438 feet. OB on the right and left. This is just a nice big hyzer for these guys. If you can hit your line correctly and not skip too hard left, you should find yourself with a birdie pot. This is really one of the first holes you step up to and you think to yourself, you gotta get this. And even then, this hole is still averaging over par at 3.04. It's all these holes are averaging at least one to 0.25 uh, over par, 0.1 to 0.25 over par. Wow. And Paul's not happy with that. It stayed a little too straight. He, he's going to have a little bit of an obstructed putt. But he's but, still inside the circle. Yeah, or, or near the edge anyway. Probably inside. This is a good line maybe coming up a bit short unless it gets a good skip forward. And yeah, just a little bit short, but still inside 30. Great hyzer from Drew. Yeah, that's Hood showing that power. You can keep the angle so steep all the way there. I think most players probably have to yeah. go a little flatter to get 438. Simon coming through with a nice rib as well, and I think just a little short. Oh, I didn't see that one come 
to rest, but yeah. It's, it's about a 40 footer, I think. Okay. The first putt on the next hole after missing a, a short dinker is always a, a challenge, like refocus, trust yourself, commit to your line. Simon's just coming up way left, way short. Paul forced into the straddle by the one tree between him and the basket. Fantastic putt. Just such an impressive display of just confidence in all angles and all stances. Just barely getting that over the rim and into the cage. And Drew with a nice birdie putt. So we'll have three birdies, and I'm sure Simon will clean up his mistake from the previous hole. As he waits for the wind to die down just a bit. Hole five, par four, 681. I find this to be one of the more difficult holes on the property. I don't know mm -hmm. what the stats bear out, but you've got to stay in between that cart path and then the golf fairway on the left side, and it really gets narrow up here at the basket. You can see that it's, it's not more than circle one. It's less than circle one wide, the green that you're looking to approach, and it's often going to be that big hyzer or, or a low underneath shot to get past those big trees. Paul's going to go with... A, just a low power shot here and perfectly that, in the middle yeah that the placement is so key on this one you, you'd like to be left side of the fairway kind of up towards the end of that car path it just kind of just stops and that opens up a really good forehand angle we got that right to left wind the last thing you want to be is short right and then having to throw the hyzer shot into this green I feel like it makes it a lot more difficult with that right to left blowing <laughs> The tee shot definitely opens up for a big shot, though. If, if if a player wanted to, they could bite off quite a bit here, but obviously the fairway just pinches narrower all the way down. And like you said, it is one of the tougher holes in the course. It is the third hardest, averaging just over a half stroke above par at 4.57. Andrew does go fairly big here. Gets the disc turned over beautifully, fading back. That is phenomenal. And he's going to be in such a great spot as far as not having many trees in his way. Right. And and that's the that's the trick. If you can get past those early trees, you don't have to go with a low ceiling approach. And Simon does the same thing. I don't know if he bit off quite as much as Drew, but those are still two phenomenal shots. And once you're up in there, I don't know. I think Simon's going to have to deal with the low ceiling. It looks like they're all three of those guys are right in the same line. And look at that. That's fantastic. The best in the game of all time at that shot. The low Anheuser flex of the stable disc. Nico Castro take lessons. He knows how to do that shot better than anyone ever. And he did it off the tee as well. The mm -hmm. forced flex and then just perfectly threaded through those trees to parked. Paul goes a little bit different line. Catches that Ooh. last tree. <laughs> Touches the OB but comes back safe. You have to work really hard to get lucky. Serena Williams. Or it takes hard work to get lucky. And this is going pretty quick. Does get the skip, but will it slow down? Yes. You can see it is just so tight, that green. Yeah. The smallest little error and you're out of bounds. And let's see if that big tee shot for Drew, if that changed his approach much. We need to get the player cam here so we can see what yeah you can see he's just not having to deal with that low ceiling which is such an advantage 
and nicely just done. Pitching the hyzer around. We've got four birdie putts in this one, which is just not something you see. Whenever the whenever when it's calm, you might see that, but when it's windy like it is today, that's a feat in itself that these four players are in the circle. Just low. Great birdie from Simon. Drew in for the birdie as well. Nico's just going to have a headbanger. Well, actually, no. I thought that he was under the basket, but he did leave himself a little bit of work left. Nico usually very deliberate from this distance, really taking his time. And he spins that one up. It's a new stroke for Nico to have that nose up spin putt. He's traditionally had that kind of nose down um, push putt for so long. Nico, the hardest worker in disc golf, perhaps, on the practice field. He will spend hours after a round has already been played, played just on the practice green, always working on correcting this game. Hole six, par three, 351. One of the easiest on the course. A little bit of out of bounds on the right side and probably a little bit more common, the OB on the left, just those that long grass on the edge of the circle. So if you come in a little too hot, you can certainly go OB left, but this is a pretty simple hyzer for these guys. Just get it up there, land slightly to the right of the basket as a right-handed thrower, and take your, your one hop to the green. Slow down. And just does curl up and bounce. OB does pinch in pretty close inside the circle, at least behind the green. If you're uh, if you're pin high, and if you're just a bit deep, it pinches in even more. Putting the brakes is very important for Drew right Ooh. here. That is definitely skipped out of bounds. Again, we we have that right to left again. So the the disc, if it's not controlled perfectly with the right angle out of the hand, it will move left quickly. This looked very wide, which is probably to his advantage. And using the wind, absolute park job for Simon. Nice, get a follow plate here. Really hard to track the disc against the bright sky. You can see he gets really wide, and the wind gets under it, pushes it over to the basket. Fantastic shot. And you gotta love when you see one parked like that on a wide open hole like this, I feel like you really can just go to school on somebody's line. Yeah, absolutely. Paul going with a fast driver. I believe that's a force, but I'm not 100% sure. And it's also high, wide, knifing down. And yep, there's that going to school thing. Paul does it better than anyone. Drew has this to save par after the out of bounds drive. That is a good par save. Really nice. Slightly into the headwind from 28 feet. That is a good pickup. Easiest hole in the course, hole six, 2.87 average. Birdie from Paul. Just four down through six. And no one else is starting off that hot. It's just really setting the pace early on. 
thrown some great shots, but really it's, I mean, it's just always quiet with him, I feel like. It's always just smooth and exactly how you planned it out. Hole seven, bar four, 648 feet. This one is through a little bit of a tunnel with a one limb that really forces you into a low shot getting out. There's OB on both sides. Most of the players are just gonna go with a low hard thrown backhand, try to keep it pretty straight the entire flight, not a lot of fade or flip to stay in the middle. And then you've got kind of an uphill approach to the elevated basket. This is one of the changes from 2019 that was really nice completely changed the style of what this hole had presented in the past. Simon going down the middle and look mm. at that nose ride. Just barely nose up and able to slide and skip from out of bounds. Probably over a hundred feet of slide there. Yeah, that was, I don't even, I can't imagine Simon was too confident with that shot out of his hand. Paul with a little bit more height. This is turning over Ooh. quite a bit. Catches the tree and that oh, maybe wow. saved him. I don't know. What do you think? It's hard to say coming out of that angle, but yeah, he had a lot of steam behind that. That could have pushed past that tree and gone to be behind that for sure. This has a lot of height, as long, but it doesn't seem to be fading much. So this could be a huge drive. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Nico uh, absolutely nailing that low ceiling tee shot to perfection. That is picture perfect. Once I get my form totally figured out, I want to throw pretty much like that is what I'm <laughs> Yeah, who wouldn't? Drew Gibson, also known as uh, Daddy Backhand, if you ask him. That was Daddy Backhand Supreme. Certainly one of the best forms in the game. And when he throws a good backhand, you take notes because that's exactly how it's supposed to be done. And Simon will have a putt for birdie from inside the circle. Paul having to get creative. Not the stance he was looking for for his second, and he is going to be well outside circle too. Shot from Nico. Perfect drive, really. Just put him in such a great position. Just a nice flat shot to the basket. And drew even closer. If you get to the ditch, you know that you've crushed it. And Drew is 50 feet past the ditch. That is an absolute hammer tee shot. Approach is just a bit short, but he'll still be within 25 feet to the elevated basket. Paul from right at the edge of circle two. Oh, wow. So close. And that's his third miss of the round that off the cage. I mean, if you call that a miss from 66 feet, but he's been on the metal for every hole that he has parred. Mm -hmm. So he's right there knocking at a seven down right now, even though he's only at four. Simon with a great birdie putt. Good pickup after the, I don't, I don't want to call it an errant approach, but he would have certainly liked a, a, a closer putt for birdie after that great tee shot, but still picks it up, moves to the next one with a birdie. And Nico in for the birdie as well, so great score for this card at three down. It is the third easiest hole of the course, but that doesn't mean it's not difficult. It's still averaging 3.89, so. Mm -hmm really aren't any easy holes in this course. They might look like they're easy just in comparison to the other holes. Hole eight is our other par five today. Uh, 1,014 feet going downhill to start, kind of up over this rise and then under the trees to the basket. You've got Obi on both sides the entire way down. It's a windy tee shot because you're kind of elevated. And I think the tee shot is probably the key part of this hole. Once you get inbounds, 
uh, I think you can make a f pretty routine birdie if you if you play within yourself. But this is also a hole where you can see a big, big number because if you start having to press and you go mm -hmm. out of bounds a couple times, you can really get in trouble. Simon catching that car path and skipping huge off to the left. He is safe. And this tee shot, just being as open as it is, it really wants the... You, you almost feel baited in, into throwing a big tee shot. Mm -hmm. But the, with the slope of this fairway, it just seems like every backhand that isn't... If it's not thrown perfect with the right angle, it seems to skip out of bounds every time. And this one is in danger right here. Yeah. But Nico going heavy angle, so it just checks up nicely. And I think, you know, though clearly 1,014 feet is a lot of feet, downhill elite throwers mm. it's really not far as a par five you like sure? you don't need a bunch of power off the tee to make birdie two good shots and you're going to be left with a putter most likely mm -hmm. drew is going to be going high speed driver he's going to be going wide and really hammers this one committing to his line that is a Ooh, hey, stays in bounds off the grass almost, it looked like. Wow, and that kind of is evident how quick that fairway gets. It just really wants to take that disc and, and send it OB left. I'm surprised seeing Paul go with a driver here. Really? I think most, I feel like that's the prevailing play, a big hyzer driver. Just these guys have such great mid-range games that throwing a mid-range straight with this left to right yeah. tailwind yeah. just seemed like a, a really great play. But all four in bounds, no complaints. Yeah, and I think with this second shot, obviously more the more distance the better. But you're just trying to get over this rise and stay straight. And I like that play from Nico, trusting that one with a flex out left. I agree. We agree with that in the booth here, Nico. <laughs> and this is a mid range for Simon. And just if that keeps holding, which it does, that's in a great spot as well. Yep, that holds on. And I don't believe that high grass is left, is OB left on the fairway. I think it's the water, but I could be wrong. I, I don't know. And Paul's worried that this is overturned. It does get a bit close, yeah. but it stays in bounds. I love that, that height on the ceiling. These trees that come in right towards the end of the shot can definitely be in the way. And if you can avoid those... Ooh. Oh, and Drew does clear the hill. Another low sidearm. Stays in bounds. Big distance. Those are the flags again for the women's pin position. That is as far as you're going to see most any player after two shots, though, on this one. That was a huge shot from Drew. But you see Simon after going controlled, controlled driver mid-range, and now it's just putter time. He can, he can slide one up pretty easily. He's probably no more than... 230 or 240 Correct. in the basket there. Nico going very overstable right to the basket. Very well done. And you can see that tree just peeking out on the left side of the, the shot there right where Paul was sitting. If he had been 15 to 20 feet shorter and about 20 feet left, that would have been a much different shot. But getting all the way up there to pass the low ceiling branches allowed that approach to be pretty simple. All four of these guys have pretty short putts, Simon being the longest one coming back with that putter. Simon creeps mm. his way in, and it's looking like we're going to see a star frame here on the sixth hardest hole in the course for this feature group. Nico taking his time, going with a push putt style on this one. Multiple styles of putting is an, that's a tough thing to have confidence to switch back and forth and know when to push putt, when to spin putt. 
But that's why Nika puts in all those practice hours, getting in the right feel for the right situation, and gives them opportunity to make the best decision. Hole nine, par four, 729, and this one has been extended. It's got to be, what, the hardest hole in the course now, right? Oh, it definitely has to be. It's OB on that left side. OB short if you don't clear the tunnel. The right side is safe now, but then you have the basket pushed back probably 80 to 90 feet and into the woods. So you have to have an absolutely huge drive to really have much of a, even a thought at going for a birdie here. You'll see a lot of fairway drivers and mid-ranges. Simon just gets through the gap. That's safe. Not in a really good position to attack birdie or anything like that, but the first and foremost, yeah. most important thing you have to do here, you've got to hit this tunnel gap. And this tunnel feels pretty small after playing on all those wide open shots. I mean, look at it. That oh, yeah. doesn't look like a lot of room. And look at Nico showing off the flex sidearm. That's a beautiful shot. He's safe. Again, nowhere near Birdieville, but that's okay. Drew a lot of height under the disc. This needs to flip in a hurry. It needed to flip and it needed to catch more of that high ceiling. He has gone across the path OB. And you go to a drop zone where it's just I, impossible. I hate the drop zone personally. I just think that it's just, you can't really get creative with it or do anything fun from there. And it's not a good place to be. Paul, if this can go to that left side of the fairway, even in the middle right there, that is the birdie zone. That's where you have an opportunity to throw that backhand turnover. But from here, it really is just kind of a... Drew's trying to make something happen here. What? I mean, he's one of the only people on the planet that could even imagine doing something like yeah, this. Yeah, wow. And that is and that out is of bounds. OB. Yeah, that, there's, I mean, yeah, I don't, not much you can do from there just besides pitch up to the top of the fairway and then you're left with a pretty tricky approach shot because this basket, like you said earlier, in that tunnel now, and you saw Simon with the driver thinking about going big yeah. and then just too much in the swing. It has to play it smart, mm -hmm. just pitch up forward. You see that golf fairway is out of bounds, so you are not, you can't just go as far as you might like. You have to be really controlled here and not throw it too far up the hill. Nico does that very well. Yep, nice control play. Another 10 feet, and that might be out of bounds. And Paul, despite a huge drive, he still has a very difficult shot here, as you can see, blind around the Look corner. At that bend. And oh my yeah. god, incredible Are you serious? shot. Oh. This is not Just. a hole where you see very many birdies. I mean, if you see somebody ever almost break their back over throwing an Anheuser shot like that, and then just to put it 10 feet away from the pin, I mean, just clinical execution. Beautiful. Simon with that forced over putter slides right to the basket. This is a really tricky tunnel. I mean, you have to be pretty close to have the confidence to hit this tunnel. It just slopes away the whole time. So not only do you have to hit this small gap, you have to put the brakes on immediately. This is overturned, I think. And that's going to be a drop stroke for Nico, most likely. And after going OBOB, OB, Drew is left with that approach. Pretty well done. What kind of stats do we have here? How many people are making birdie here? What percentage? Well, only 7% of the field was able to pick up a birdie, and that is with a 98 play count. So that is give a you small number. Seven players total on the field. This is Drew for double bogey. Picks up the double, moves to even par. A lot of action in his scorecard for the front nine. Play with Eric Oakley on this card, and he went forehand, forehand birdie on, which is just really tricky thing to do on this one. It, it really feels like the play is backhand straight to that left side of the fairway, and then backhand turnover, and 
kind of an inspirational player for a player like myself to see someone go forehand, forehand on this hole. It's just so tough. Wow. And we got our U-Disc leaderboard check-in, as you might expect. Paul McBeth, six under through the first nine. That is going to be our leading score. But Emerson Keith right there at five. A couple other players close, four and three all the way down. It's still tight, obviously, just nine holes in. And in look at Ricky Wysocki, two down in the front nine, and he's in the top ten, just really showing out, showing off how difficult this course is playing. Let's get to the back nine and give you some more disc golf action. Thank you to all the supporters, Founders Club especially, for helping bring this coverage and make it make it possible for us to be out here. <laughs>